Now, if you have hip pain from osteoarthritis or other issues in the hip, like bursitis, okay, you can use a muscle therapy system to help you. Now, if you have a hip replacement already, or if you've got metal implant, you can still use this, and it'll help you tremendously, because after surgery, you can have a lot of scarring in the area, and the stimulation will help to loosen up the scars and the muscle around that joint, all right? So after your surgery, after everything's healed, you can uh, definitely you know, use this, and you should be using it. And if you do have metal implant, and when you put the stimulation on, if you do feel a little pins and needle, you simply move the pads a little bit you know, to the side, and that should be okay then. All right, so use the large flex tone pads. And what we want to do is, we want to surround the hip. Right? So if you're pain, it's right in the hip joint. So we're going to put two pads around the hip. Or if you have the luxury of having four of the large pads, you can do all four at the same time. So we want one above, one below. We're going to stimulate that for about 20 minutes, okay? And it doesn't matter which mode you use, but you do want to turn up to a point where you get some, you know, strong stimulation and the muscles moving, okay? So you feel a nice contraction, nice relaxation, relaxing the area, relieving the pain and the inflammation. Now, after 20 minutes, we want to switch the pads to different location. Now, this time, I want you to put one pad Right in the buttock area, this is where the nerve is, where the piriformis is, okay? Uh, so we're going to put that right on the buttock, where you put your wallet for the guys out there, okay, right there. And then the second pad, I'll just use this to show you, you're going to put right on the groin area, all right? So just one pad right on the groin line, like this, all right? And again, do that for at least 20 minutes, all right? So basically, you, you're doing what, what we call surround the dragon. You're surrounding that painful joint. So. I'm just going to repeat myself here. So to begin with, one pad above and one pad below. Right there. Do that for 20 minutes. After that, one pad on the buttock, another pad on the groin line for another 20 minutes for hip pain. All right. Good. Now, if you have groin pain, okay, like a lot of athletes out there have groin pain. They pull the groin muscle and hockey players, uh, other people who, you know, push off a lot, you know, or they, they happen to hit the toe playing soccer, uh, they can pull that groin muscle. So what you do is, you put one pad around the groin line, and the other one just above it or just below it. And I would do both, all right, to help to relax the muscle and to st stimulate the body's own ability to heal itself. So that's for anybody with groin muscle pain. Uh, you should be doing you know, this treatment lying down on your back with your hips slightly flexed, okay? Put a pillow, couple of pillows under your knee, so that muscle can be relaxed while you're giving treatment, all right? Uh, same thing with hip, okay? When you're treating your hip, you should be lying on your back or sitting, and then put a couple, you know, when you, if you're lying down, put a couple pillows under your knee so the hip is in a nice, loose position. Let me show you a series of exercises for your hip-related problems. Now, find yourself a good chair, okay, to support yourself or anything that can support yourself. And just swing your hips back and forth like a pendulum, okay? Don't need any force, just gently swing that hip. You just want that joint to go back and forth. Again, motion is lotion. You want to lubricate that hip joint. So this is very good for anybody with, you know, arthritic changes in the hip joint. Or if you got tight muscle in your hip joint, that will help to loosen them too. So do this as often as you can throughout the day, and after a few months, you'll see a big difference with your joint pain. Now, I'm gonna show you some stretching as well. So again, find yourself a good chair to support with. Stand with the bad leg towards the chair. Put the bad leg behind you, and support the weight with your hand, and go down gently. Then you should feel the stretching on the side of your hip, just like that. Okay, now, to stretch the groin muscles, I point my toes forward, front, okay, and back foot, and I just go down. Just go straight down, and just a little bit forward, keeping my back straight or slightly extended. And just leaning forward, and you should feel the pulling in the front. Now, if you want more stretch, you just have a longer stride. 
just like that, okay? And to stretch the adductors, I turn my foot sideways. And doing the same motion, I just go down slowly, supporting the weight with your hand. So you can control how much stretching you're going to have. So this, turn the foot out, I'm stretching the adductors. I turn my foot forward, again, like a fencer stand, all right? Just gently go down and slightly forward. So you feel some stretching here and in the front. Okay, so those are good stretching for your hip. Now, to work on any tight muscles that you might have inside the hip area, the gluteus muscle, the piriformis muscle, you just lie on your back, okay? Now, this is a two-step process. First, you lift your hip up till it's making a straight line with your back. And then, you push your feet away from your buttock. So my feet is going away from me. And that's the action. Now, some of you may find it easier to be pushing against the wall or something that don't give. And if you do it right, you can feel the buttock muscle really tense. But the hamstring muscle at the back of the leg here, that stay nice and loose. If you just feel tension in the back of your leg, then that's not correct. You want to feel the tension here. This is the muscle you're working on. And the hamstring stay nice and loose. So push away from you. Contract for 10 seconds. And relax. Okay? So lift up. Push away. Push, 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 push. For 10 seconds. Again, this is tense, this is loose, and relax. And repeat that 10 times, and then do that a couple times a day, that'll help you a lot. Now, if you have uh, problems with your upper leg, okay, uh, I'm gonna show you how to put the pads and where to put the pads uh, for each muscle group. So if you have a problem with the hamstring group, so you just put one pad, on the lower portion of the hamstring, and then one just in the belly, okay, of the hamstring muscle, just like that, all right? And you just simply turn it on. Now, you wanna make sure the muscle's nice and loose while you're treating it, all right? So you don't wanna be tensing it up, okay? Just like that, you want to let it contract and relax so that it can go through its workout cycles, and then the blood will circulate better, the nerve will circulate better, uh, and then the muscle will, will, will start to heal on itself. Now, if you have sciatic pain going down your legs, okay, this is one area you can use that. Uh, but the other area that's crucial is right here in the buttock area. So you want one pad here and then the other pad, you know, in the location where you're having pain or numbness. So I'm going to talk more about sciatic pain in uh, treatment of low back and sciatica uh, section of the DVD. Now, if you have, let me turn it off, pain on this side here, what we call Iliotibial band syndrome. Uh, this is what you do. All right? You put one pad on the side of the thigh, and the second pad, there's two locations. Okay? One is you put it just in front of your hip here, and then another one just to the back of the hip. What the objective here is to basically relieve the pain you know, where the tibial band is. That's one sheath that runs here. And the other objective is, is to normalize the tone of those muscles that's controlling that iliotibial band. So we're gonna control the hip flexors and control the hip extensor muscle. So by putting it here, we're gonna relax the hip flexors. By putting behind the hip, we're gonna relax the hip extensors so that if those muscles pull properly, then this iliotibial band will work better and then you can have less pain. Now, if you have pain right where the iliotibial band you know, uh, connects to the knee area, then what you do is put one pad, you know, over that area and the other one in the middle of the iliotibial band. Uh, this is very important for those of you who do a lot of sports, especially running sports, sprinting sports, okay? Uh, those areas can be troublesome. Okay, next area, uh, if you have hurt your quadriceps, okay, that's the, you know, four muscle that make up the front of your thigh, uh, so basically, again, whichever muscle you feel is giving you problem, you just put the pads over it, and it's very simple. 
the key is make sure your legs are nice and relaxed. So you should probably should be just sitting down, you know, letting, letting your legs hang loose, and then let the machine, you know, stimulate the nerve and muscle to restore normal motion and normal function back in those muscles. What the machine does, it basically relaxes the muscle. So if they're too tense, which is usually the case, it'll help to relax it. It also helps to tone the muscle, meaning if the muscle fibers are too loose, it helps to bring it back its normal tonicity. Okay? So it can do both because it normalizes the nerve and muscle function. Now the other thing it does, it helps to stimulate the nerve and blood circulation. And if the blood and nerve is circling better, you're gonna get better, you know, better and faster pain relief, but more importantly, faster tissue repair. So we basically are trying to help the body to heal itself faster, and that's the key here. Now, some of you may be getting what we call uh, patella femoral joint syndrome, meaning you get pain behind the kneecap, okay? It's not the ligaments, it's actually behind the kneecap. And that can be caused by imbalances of the muscle that control, okay, your leg movement. So if that's the case, I would treat the knee, so go to the section where you know, I teach you how to treat knees, but I would also treat the muscle of the quadricep, especially this muscle here, what we call the vastus medialis muscle. So we put one pad there, okay, as one, you know, as part of the treatment, and then we stimulate, because we wanna make sure the tone of this group and this group are normal, okay? If we do that, then the kneecap will stay in better alignment because you're pulling on it evenly. It's like different cables. If one cable's too tight, then the alignment's gonna be off. But if both cable are equally, you know, have equal tension, then the kneecap's gonna track better, you know, within the, 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 you know, the, the knee joint. So that's gonna make it work better. So for the vastus mediators, and then, you know, the other group on the outside, so in the fancy name for this muscle group is the vastus, you know, lateralis, okay? So basically, this is what we do, all right? Uh, Time-wise, usually I keep the treatment around 20, 30 minutes because that's the amount of the time you need to help you know, to see and measure a big difference in improvement. And repetition, any, anything from three to five times a day or as you need it is fine. Again, don't worry about overusing. Now, another muscle group that often uh, causes people problem is the adductor group, okay? The, the muscle inside your thigh. So this one, okay, you basically put it close to the groin line, okay, right here, that's close to the attachment, is where they usually have the problem. And the other one just a little bit further down. Make sure the pads are not touching. If the pad, anytime the pads are touching, the machine, you know, you're not gonna feel stimulation because the electrical pulse will go through the pads instead of your body, okay? Again, just turn up to a point where you actually get contraction. Just as a reminder, always let that muscle that you're treating be nice and relaxed. Let the machine do the work. Don't fight it, okay? Just let it do its own work, and then uh, it's gonna heal much better, just like that, okay? Uh, and that's it, okay? Uh, best wish to your injuries, and uh, hope you heal very fast. Now, my circulation promoter is fantastic for treating the following conditions. If you have foot pain from plantar fasciitis, heel spur, uh, if you've got a bunion, or arthritic toes, or if you've got well, a very sensitive spot, we call Morton's neuroma, this is fantastic. If you're an athlete, you've got a sprained ankle, this is good. If you're the type of person that holds a lot of water around your ankle, water accumulation from poor blood or lymphatic you know, drainage, this is fantastic. Or if you just love a foot massage, this will give you a fantastic relaxation foot massage to help relieve the soreness and the tightness that you may be experiencing every day. Now, if you suffer with more the severe problem, you know, with nerve damage in your legs from diabetes or diabetic neuropathy, this is one of the best device out there for diabetic neuropathy. If you have nerve damage from polio after a stroke, or you got restless leg syndrome, or that numbness and shooting pain down your legs from a disc problem, this thing can help you tremendously. Use it regularly, you know, use it at least 20 to 40 minutes each time, more if you need to, especially if you have lost sensation. If you have a loss of sensation, you may have to do it for one hour before the nerve wake up, that's okay. If one side feel more than the other side, that's also okay, because that just means the side you're not feeling it, the nerve is slightly damaged, so it's not gonna conduct as well. But after repeated use, after prolonged use, you will see that the sensation will come back and you'll feel stronger and stronger stimulation and everything will start to normalize, okay? 
Now, let me just go ahead and show you, okay? Uh, basically, the first thing you do, you spray some water on the pads, and make sure you get plenty of water over the red superconducting electrodes, okay? So spray the water on the pad first, then spray some water on the bottom of your feet, on both sides, okay? Then just put your feet on, you just turn it on, and keep turning it up until you feel the stimulation, okay? Again, if you don't feel anything, just keep turning it up, okay? And some of you with uh, nerve, nerve damage from diabetes, you may actually have to keep it on full intensity for up to an hour before you wake the nerves up. That's okay. Now, once the nerves wakes up, you're going to have to turn it back down to a more comfortable level. Uh, most people with normal nerve function takes about intensity two to feel it. So just turn it back to a point where you feel the muscle contracting and the con you know, circulation is really good, but make sure it's comfortable for you. Uh, for those of you who get sprained ankle, I suggest you do the feet and also use the large flex stone pads on your ankle, just like this. I'm going to show you the pad placement, but you can refer to the other section of this DVD for very specific detailed treatment for each of these conditions, okay? So if you have a sprained ankle, just put one large pad on each side of your ankle, just like that, okay? In addition to doing the uh, treatment with the circulation promoter, you should do this as well for better treatment, okay? Just like that for sprained ankle. Very simple. For those of you who get cramps in your calf muscle, okay, or restless leg syndrome, or sciatic nerve related problem, or if you just overuse your calf from doing sports, use it like this, okay, on your calf muscle. One pad on each side of your calf muscle. For those of you who have knee problem, this is fantastic. If you have arthritic knee pain, if you have a sports injury, if you have metal implants, it is safe and necessary to use, okay? Put on your knee like that. If you have injured any muscles, you know, strained it or pull your muscle, you can use the pads on different muscles, okay, in your lower limb. And if you have any kind of nerve problem in your leg, I also recommend you watch the instructional DVD, this section under low back pain, hip pain, and sciatic nerve problems, okay? Watch that part of the DVD to learn how to use the large flexone pads on the lower back, on your hip, and leg area for best results, okay? So combine the, you know, the feet uh, stimulation treatment together with body treatment, and you will see tremendous results. Now, if you have pain in your ankle from a sprain, uh, old fractures, or if you have arthritis in your ankle, or if you have swelling in your ankles, do this treatment. Now, take the big pads, and then put one on each side of your ankle. Now, one thing you have to be uh, aware of is that make sure the pads are not touching each other. See, if the pads are touching each other, then the current will go through the pads and not through your body. So make sure the pads are not touching each other. Very important. So let me space them apart even more so you have a really good idea that they are not touching each other. All right? Okay. So once you got them on, and then you just turn it on, okay, and just like that. And again, we want to turn to a point where we're actually feeling a little bit of movement in the muscle around the area, because that will help uh, you to get your best results. Now, if you happen to get swelling in your ankle from sitting on a plane, or, you know, or sitting too long, period, if you have diabetic neuropathy, you can use this while you're sitting on the plane or when you're traveling anywhere or even when you're sitting in the office for long hours, okay? If you have a recently sprained ankle, then keep this on all day long, okay? You, you don't have to worry about overusing it. Just, you know, stimulate it and do the exercise, you know, I, I taught you, I'm teaching you in the DVD, okay? Uh, if you do that, you're going to see much better recovery. Just use it as often as long as you can, if you have a recently sprained ankle, it helps to reduce the inflammation, you improve the circulation, and speed up the recovery of the, you know, the over overstretched uh, ligament. So and relax the muscle around the area, so you can get much faster healing than if you, you know, don't do it. All right. Now, if you have a recently sprained ankle and it's really bad, so it's sewn up, you can't put any weight on it, you can't walk. Best thing you do is to leave the pads on and keep it stimulating all day long, okay? The more you do it, the better it is. 
and also do the exercises that I show you in the video. If you have, uh, you know, chronically swollen ankle from poor circulation, or if you have diabetic neuropathy, then again, use it often. Use it while you're traveling, sitting on that plane, uh, sitting in the office, even you're sitting, you know, watching TV at home. Just use it often and regularly, and you'll see the best results. Now, if you have pain in your ankle from arthritis, or if you happen to sprain your ankle badly, then you should be doing the following exercises, okay? What I want you to do is just move your ankle back and forth in this full range of motion as often as you can. So just like this, okay, watch. So just moving, point your toes down, point your toes up. Toes down, toes up. Toes down, toes up. Just whenever you have a chance, just keep doing that. Pump your ankles, okay? Just pumping it, it will help to help it heal itself. Now, you also need to set the ankle back into its place. So what you do is find yourself a step, okay? Hold on to something, and then just step on the edge of the step and put some weight on your legs, okay? To weigh down the ankle, so to push the ankle deep back into the socket, just like that. And also it helps to stretch out your calf muscle, okay? So just like that. And to strengthen the ankle, then what I suggest, you just go up and slowly sink down. Go up and slowly sink down. And just repeat that every once in a while. So that will help you recover much faster than if you don't do these exercises. Good. Now, if you have knee pain from arthritis, osteoarthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, gouty arthritis, or sports injury, okay, like a, like a ligamentous tear, a menisci tear, if the tear is minor, okay, you can actually use my machine to help treat yourself for excellent results. And it's very easy to use. All you do is use the large pads here, the large flexion pads, and put one pad on each side of your knee. Just like that, okay, and just turn it on until you feel a nice stimulation, all right? Now, besides using the stimulation, you should also be doing the passive uh, exercise I'll be showing you, okay, as part of this DVD series, and you should also take a supplement, especially if you have joint cartilage, you know, degeneration or damage, you should take uh, some joint supplements and you can always go on our website to find out which supplement is best for that. So I suggest you stimulate the area at least 20 minutes at a time, three, four, five times a day, or whenever you can. In fact, if you happen to have a sit down type of job, uh, you can actually have this on all the time. Uh, the more you stimulate, the faster it's gonna get better. All right, so basically this is the main treatment on both sides of the knee, and that's what you do. Now some of you may have some pain behind the kneecap, the patella, then what I suggest you do, you just put the pads above the kneecap, okay, and then the second one, you can put it anywhere you like. But we want to stimulate this area because there's a small blood vessels that goes to the kneecap and we want to stimulate the circulation of that blood vessel to help it further, okay, so just like that. Now, if you have a lot of swelling in your knees, this is also good because this gets the circulation going to reduce the inflammation. If you happen to be the type of person that get a lot of swelling in your legs overall, okay, whether it's your knee, your calf area, use it in this area, plus you can use it on the calf muscle to actually use the, what we call the muscle pumping action to help drive the lymphatic and the blood circulation to help to reduce the overall swelling, all right? So try that and you'll see excellent results. Now, some of you may be getting what we call uh, patella femoral joint syndrome, meaning you get pain behind the kneecap, okay? It's not the ligaments, it's actually behind the kneecap. And that can be caused by imbalances of the muscle that control, okay, your leg movement. So if that's the case, I would treat the knee. So go to the section where, you know, I teach you how to treat knees. But I would also treat the muscle of the quadriceps, especially this muscle here, what we call the vastus medialis muscle. So we put one pad there, 
okay, as one, you know, as part of the treatment, and then we stimulate because we want to make sure the tone of this group and this group are normal, okay? If we do that, then the kneecap will stay in better alignment because you're pulling on it evenly. It's like different cables. If one cable is too tight, then the alignment is going to be off. But if both cable are equally, you know, have equal tension, then the kneecap is going to track better, you know, within the, 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 you know, the, the knee joint. So that's going to make it work better. So for the vastus mediators, and then, you know, the other group on the outside, so in the fancy name for this muscle group is the vastus, you know, lateralis, okay? So basically, this is what we do, all right? Uh, Time-wise, usually I keep the treatment around 20, 30 minutes because that's the amount of the time you need to help, you know, to see and measure a big difference in improvement. And repetition, any, anything from three to five times a day or as you need it is fine. Again, don't worry about overusing. Now, if you had knee surgery, or if you had metal implants in your knees already, you should be using the pain therapy system on your knee because it helps to break up the scar tissue, helps to reduce the inflammation, and relieve the pain. Now, it is perfectly safe to use the pain therapy system on any area where you have metal. So if you have metal implants in your knees, go ahead and use it. It's good for it. Now, if you happen to feel like pins and needle, all you have to do, just move the pads over slightly and then that's fine. Also, if you're on any medication, or if you're diabetic, you can also safely use this device because there's no chemicals involved. So you can use it for long term, as often as you like, with no side effects, only feeling good. Now, one exercise I always recommend for anyone with knee pain, especially if you have arthritic changes in your knee joint, is to passively swing your legs now, I recommend you swing it about 2,000 times a day. Now, that may sound like a lot, but it really isn't. And what I recommend is you just do about 100 each time and just do a three of the day because it's going to really help to lubricate the joint and help to re-stimulate some cartilage, new cartilage regeneration. So watch my knees, all right? So very simple. Just support yourself somewhere, you know, by holding on to something and just gently swing that knee, okay? We're not working the muscle. We just gently and passively moving that joint within its range of motion, okay? So full range of motion. I want the knee to be bent and then straighten out, but very loosely, okay? Just like that, very loosely right from the hip. So it's very fast to do about 100. So to do 2,000 a day, it really is, is very simple. If you do that, it's gonna really help to improve the overall health of your knee. So continue to do that, and you're gonna see some big changes over time. Now, if you get uh, pain in your calf muscles, or if your calf muscle happen to go into spasm you know, during the night, you can use my pain therapy system to help to relieve the muscle spasm. Also, if you get swelling in your legs, if you have ankle problems, if you have diabetic neuropathy, uh, poor lymphatic drainage, this same stimulation on the calf muscle is gonna help with all those uh, different conditions. So, we're gonna use the large pads. In fact, use the large pads for your entire body except for your neck and face. So, basically two ways you can do it. You can put one pad on each side of the calf muscle just like that, okay? And just turn it on. And again, it doesn't matter which mode you choose to use. Uh, they will give you the same results. Uh, but you do want to turn up to a point where you're actually getting some stimulation and muscle activity. You want muscle to contract and relax because it will squeeze the, the lymphatics, squeeze the blood vessel, and release them to help pump the fluid and pump the inflammation you know, from your lower limb. So it's gonna be very good for anybody uh, who suffers with circulation problem and also anyone who gets cramping in the calf. Now, second uh, pad placement uh, is this. I can just put one pad behind the calf and the second one goes behind my knee. Now this position might actually be more effective for those of you who have what we call 
sciatic nerve problem. If you have pain or numbness that runs down from your back to your hip all the way down your leg, then you want to try to pass you know, in this two area because we want to stimulate the circulation of your sciatic nerve. Okay, so let me turn it on, I'll turn it up, and then turn it on. Again, we want to turn up to a point where we're actually seeing and feeling some muscle contraction and relaxation. And, uh, as you may have experienced by now, the sensation changes all the time because my device is programmed to modify itself so your body never gets used to it. That's why this is one of the most effective pain relieving uh, and self you know, healing product there is around, okay? And this feels really good, and uh, this may allow you to re you know, get rid of that cramp and get a better night's sleep. Okay, so take care. Now, if you suffer with pain at the front of the leg or the shin area, or if you get what we call shin splint, now you need to rest the leg, okay, if you're a jogger or, you know, a, a walker, just rest it a little bit and then use a stimulation from the pads to help to restore good function there and to relieve the pain. Now the first pad, just put it below the knee on the shin side. And then the second pad can go just where anywhere you want, but just a little bit below is good. Now first pad should go on here because there is a nerve that exits from this part of the, the leg and we want to stimulate that nerve in order to get the healing going on. And all you do, just turn it on. And then you want to turn it on to a point where you actually get muscle contraction and relaxation. And you can use any mode you like and do it for at least 20 minutes. And you can repeat it three, four times a day until you see your maximum recovery. Okay? So that's basically what you need to do to relieve your shin pain and shin splint. But if you do have shin splint, that means you got some micro fracture within the shin bone, so you should be taking some rest. But the stimulation is going to recover much faster.